Hey guys, what's going on? Andrew coming at you, and this one we're talking about Sweden advancing out of the group of death in the World Cup. That's coming up. So before we start this, my experience with watching Sweden play football over the years had to been started really with the the Euro Cup when I started following Sweden. And one thing I always noticed when uh, Ibrahimovic played is it always felt like the team was so focused on getting him the ball, and it always felt like he was so focused on doing everything himself. No doubt, one of the best players to play the game, and awesome, but in a weird way, I felt like they, they didn't play as a team. I, they, they always worked so hard to get him the ball, and I just felt like sometimes he was trying as hard as he can. I see this sometimes with stars that play in the World Cup. Um, they're, they're great, but they sometimes think they just try too much or too much pressure's on them and they're expected of too much. And it doesn't always work out that way. So weirdly, I was kind of interested to see what would happen when Sweden would play without him and when he made a decision to not play uh, in the World Cup. Watching the first game with Sweden in South Korea, I thought it was a pretty even match. Um, I really wasn't impressed with Sweden in this game. I was happy that they had won. Uh, but I think anytime you win with a penalty kick... Um, I'm not a penalty kick that that was deserved, but still, it wasn't like a solid victory, but it was a victory nonetheless, and I was happy about that for Sweden. Now, the Germany match moving forward is, I think, the turning point for the team. This was the time I watched the game, even though they lost. I was like, wait, this 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 team is for real. Sweden's style of football, and what I really enjoy, is that they just basically play defense and have an awesome counterattack. And we have a saying, at least in the United States, when it comes to football that you know, offense wins games and defense wins championships. What I really like they do is they let the team shoot, they really put a lot of guys in the box to try to block, and then they just have an awesome counter. There should have been a penalty kick that was not called uh, early in the game, and then it was just an awesome goal that they scored on Germany. Uh, it was the time I really saw that Sweden could play with the best of them uh, moving forward. And it was also the time that I really, I've grown to really respect the coach of this team. What I like about Sweden's coach is he's very animated when he needs to be, but he doesn't overly celebrate when they score a goal, which shows me that he's very, very focused. And I can see that the players see that. I also really loved when he lost his cool, when those guys went over and celebrated in the Sweden's bench, which was not cool. And when I saw him get upset, uh, it was kind of awesome in a sense. And what I mean by that is you saw the passion in him, you saw the passion from the players and the team. And I think sometimes a coach needs to be that way to lose his cool. And what I really liked was once he was in the interview after the game, he said, you know, it's okay, we're gonna move on to the next game. And it was awesome because if if you believe in karma, it, things didn't really work out well for Germany uh, in their final game. And I'm not saying all the players taunted. It was just a few people that moved over, and that doesn't say anything about the whole entire team, of course. Uh, but I, I, I liked what he did. And that was the game where Sweden really showed me that they have a lot of skills when it comes to, to playing defense. Now, watching that Sweden-Mexico game was just a turning point for me where I really feel this team has the potential to go very, very far uh, in the league. Mexico is no joke. Uh, Mexico has played really, really well uh, and I think Mexico didn't have to win as much. You know, maybe they didn't, they weren't playing with as much fire. But I really felt like it just looked like Sweden exhausted them in the first half. They played really, really good defense. And then they just got their opportunities. And they shined and they took care of it. And they had a very, very solid victory. Again, I just loved how the coach was. He never, he was happy at the end of the game, of course. But when they were scoring goals and taking the lead, he showed focus. And I think that's really great leadership because I think the players really feed off of that. So moving forward, there's no doubt to me that the Swedish team is a better team without Zlatan, which I know is controversial, but I just feel that's the, just the way it is. Uh, they play better as a team. They're more equal. Nobody really stands out, but that's kind of, if you know anything about Swedish society, it's just the way it is. It's like the team is very lagom, I guess I would say, and they play really, really well. So they have this matchup coming up in Switzerland. We'll have to see what happens. Anything is possible, but I really think that Sweden has the potential to move very, very far in this World Cup, which is a lot of fun to see. Um, it would be awesome to see a team uh, from a Nordic country move on, especially because Iceland is not advancing. So I would be very happy to see that. What do you guys think about Sweden's chances? And what do you think of my analysis of this? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Go ahead and hit those in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.